Believe me when I say I've seen a lot of stupid products, from ones that obviously can't live up to their lofty claims, to ones that are just plain bad ideas to begin with. And most of the time, I don't even bother trying this stuff out. But when a company with as much clout as Razer brings a new headset to market, one that claims to vibrate your head with intelligent haptic technology, well, there's just no way that I can not try it. But here's the most surprising thing of all. These might somehow, even at $200, be worth a fair shake. Mack Weldon wants you to be more comfortable, so if you don't love your first pair of underwear, you can keep it and get a full refund with their try-on guarantee. Use code TECHTIPS and get 20% off at the link below. When Razer's Nari Ultimate headset arrived, I was pretty skeptical. Actually, I was skeptical before it arrived. I mean, first, I disagreed with their premise that sound is just as important as sight when you're in-game. It is possible to play CSGO without sound. It is not possible to play without a monitor. <laughs> then, I mean, I wasn't sure that I even wanted a rumble pack strapped to my head. And besides, I mean, technically speaking, don't all headphones vibrate? Isn't that just how speakers work? Okay, so the difference here is that on top of having regular 50 millimeter dynamic drivers, which do in fact vibrate to make sound, the Nari Ultimates are also outfitted with a pair, one in each cup of L5 haptic drivers from Lofelt, who you may remember from such memorable products as the Baselit wearable subwoofer. Like speakers, the haptic drivers articulate according to the signal coming over the speaker cable. But unlike speakers, which move a diaphragm to create sound energy, these use actuators that move back and forth, turning electrical energy into mechanical energy. Okay, that's pretty similar, but it's like bigger. So yes, it is kind of like a rumble pack on your head, but it's a very different kind of rumble than what you get from a, a controller. So unlike a controller rumble, which has only very coarse control, like that the developer actually has to specifically program into their game, like well, you crash into a wall. The Nari Ultimate's implementation requires no software support at all and responds in real time over a frequency range of 20 to 200 Hertz which actually conveniently overlaps with the headphone driver's own frequency response. So in other words, the headphones are not relying on the haptic drivers for the user's low frequency sensation, they're just augmenting it with them. So, how does it sound or um, feel? Well, depending on the application, these can actually have a surprisingly impactful, pardon the pun, positive effect that is similar to the sensation of standing near a kick drum or next to a large floor standing speaker at a concert and feeling the air move over you in time with the music as you listen. Obviously it doesn't move over you, but the point is you can feel it. So we tested the Nari Ultimates with games, music, and movies. And the main takeaway, for those of you who won't make it any further into the video than this, is that if the content has consistent low tones, explosions, gunfire, pounding bass, these will make the content more engrossing and immersive. So you can actually use Razer's Synapse software to not just toggle the haptics, which Razer is branding as Hypersense, on and off, but also adjust the intensity through a nine step range. In shooter games, which are probably the best use of these puppies so far. James had Hypersense cranked up to 10, loving every second of it. As for me, I preferred more in the range of eight, but I still had it cranked up pretty high. And it's honestly, it's really cool. Weapons feel more physical, like more powerful and more immediate. Explosions feel way more epic. And like I didn't, like I put them on and I was like, yeah, my head's vibrating, but I didn't realize how much cooler it was until I switched the haptics off and heard how utterly neutered the games felt without it. Like 
Like, it's like kind of sad. Similarly, Hypersense adds a lot of impact to action scenes in movies, or just about any movie trailer. In a world. There were, however, lots of times during our testing when Hypersense was either ineffectual or downright distracting. It adds almost nothing, for example, to StarCraft II, where battles are more intermittent and not all of the units make noises that have low tones. And in movies or YouTube videos, it can end up registering false positives while men are talking. This is a regular drill, yeah. and then the other two are impacts. Okay, just compensating. <laughs> or from sounds like footsteps, resulting in just kind of an annoying, muddy rumble. As for music, I never thought I'd hear myself say this about a Razer audio product. Sarcasm detected. But music is the experience that is the least consistent across the board for the Nari Ultimates. If you're into classical, the haptics are seldom used, if at all. And then with metal, the low tones are often so complex and intermittent that hypersense is distracting. And then even with genres where it definitely enhances things, like hip hop and electronic music, the effect can vary so much between songs that within a single playlist, you'll probably find yourself wanting to go back to Synapse to tweak the knobs far more often than you'd like. An opportunity that you'll only have, by the way, if you happen to be using them on a PC. Because while your profile is saved on device, and while the Nari Ultimates with their 2.4 gigahertz dongle and included combo cable do work both wirelessly and with a wire on PC, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, and more, you can only adjust Hypersense using the desktop software. So you're gonna have to set it and forget it, something that's easy to deal with if you just play games, but less easy to deal with if you expect to use your Nari Ultimates for listening to music or listening to music while you play games, while you're out and about with your phone, for example. So we think most console or mobile gamers will end up having to choose between setting Hypersense lower and having a more subtle effect than they'd like, or setting it too high and sometimes having to deal with too strong of an effect. And this is a problem that could have been easily avoided if they had just put a Hypersense control wheel right on the device. But they didn't, which is a total drag for console gamers and a shame because otherwise the industrial design and controls are pretty good. So the Nari Ultimates use a self-adjusting suspension style design with big swiveling ear cups that are comfortable over long periods. The plush leather red ear cushions are infused with this cooling gel that's supposed to keep them cool, and they have cutouts to make them more comfortable to wear with glasses. Though, in our experience, each of these features only kind of works. The mic, which is flexible and retracts into the ear cup, is serviceable but not fantastic, though I am a fan of the helpful yet non-intrusive red light that indicates it's been muted. Which brings us to the onboard buttons. So you can mute the mic with a button on the back of the ear cup, where you will also find wheels for volume, as well as game versus voice level adjustment. You'll find a handy slot to keep the dongle and a micro USB port. Really, you guys? That's pretty weak, especially since using Hypersense and Razer Chroma RGB can train the battery in about eight to 10 hours. And making matters worse, it takes quite a while to charge up enough that the vibrating feature can be activated again. For $200, a fast charging USB type C port that lets me spend more time using these wireless headphones as wireless headphones doesn't seem unreasonable. So, are they worth the money? Well, it's complicated. For the right person, the Hypersense haptic feedback, which I was certain was going to be a silly, stupid gimmick that no one could possibly want, is absolutely worth the extra 50 bucks over the Nari non-ultimate, which are the same headset, but without hypersense. As for whether the regular Nari is worth $150, well, that's a little tougher because you can get much better sound for the same price and probably with better, less plasticky overall build quality. So that makes it really hard for me to recommend these, but then they're also an utterly unique gaming experience that is worth trying for yourself. Something that can't be said about a lot of these kind of feature gaming peripherals. So, good work, Razer, I guess? Is there someone in your life who asks questions like, 
how do refrigerators work? Or how do I solve this puzzle? Or maybe even, what is quantum computing? If so, I've got just a thing for you. You can spread the love of science to your loved ones by gifting them Brilliant. It's really cool because it's such a fun way to nurture curiosity, build confidence, and develop problem-solving skills that are crucial to school, job interviews, their career, basically just life. Brilliant's thought-provoking content breaks up complexities into bite-sized, understandable chunks that can lead them from curiosity to mastery. And the first 200 people that go to brilliant.org slash Linus Tech Tips, we're going to have that linked below, are going to get 20% off their annual subscription for themselves or as a gift to help a loved one finish their day a little bit smarter than they started. So thanks for watching, guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join. You should go join it. You should go join the forum!